Good day or evening, dear participants. In this sixth lecture of Module 5, we are going to focus on monitoring and reporting the learning progress. Let us introduce this topic. The concept of monitoring and reporting the learning progress is rooted in the idea that education should be learner-centered and that the success of education should be measured by the progress that learners make towards the desired learning outcomes. The goal of monitoring and reporting learning progress is to provide information to parents, teachers, school administrators, policymakers, and other stakeholders about the progress that students are making toward the desired learning outcomes. Reporting the learning progress of the learner is the presentation of evidence of learning and development of learners on a very brief report form that is understandable to a variety of education stakeholders. It is the systematic and timely provision of essential learning information on how students are learning. Since monitoring and evaluation is crucial in the process of teaching and learning, reporting learners' performance and giving feedback to education stakeholders is equally essential. Reporting is an integral part of the monitoring function. Let us see the function of reporting functionally. Reporting serves three core purposes. 1. Instructional uses. The main focus is to improve the learning and development of the learner in terms of facilitating their work habits or relationships with others. This improvement may occur when the report clarifies instructional objectives, indicates the strengths and weaknesses in the student's learning process and provides information concerning learners' personal social development or when it motivates learners. 2. Report to parents, guardian, about their children's progress in learning in school. It is important for teachers to inform parents or guardians about their children's progress in learning in school because, firstly, parents, guardians, are enabled to cooperate with the school in promoting their children's learning development if they know what the school is trying to do. Secondly, information concerned with their children's success, failure, and special problems in learning enables parents or guardians to give learners educational support and encouragement as they know them better. Thirdly, knowing their children's strengths and weakness in learning provides the basis for helping learners make sound educational and vocational plans. Three. Administrative and guidance uses reporting as a process tends to give information of an individual to school administrators, which may provide them with insights for future planning of resource allocation. Criteria used to measure learning progress of learners monitoring is closely aligned with the criteria used for measuring learning progress. The data collected during monitoring process is compared against the established criteria to determine the extent to which learners are meeting the expected standards. The criteria serve as a guide for interpreting the collected data and determining the level of achievement or progress. Here are some common criteria that can be used to measure learning progress in relation to 21st century skills. 1. Knowledge and Understanding Assessing learners' knowledge and understanding involves evaluating their grasp of key concepts, facts, and principles related to the subject matter. This criterion examines the depth and accuracy of learners' knowledge and their ability to apply it appropriately. 2. Skill Mastery Measuring learners' skill mastery involves assessing their proficiency in applying specific skills relevant to the subject or learning area. Skills can include critical thinking, problem solving, communication, research, data analysis, creativity, or technical skills. Criteria for skills mastery may focus on the application, complexity, and effectiveness of the learner's skills. 3. Application of learning. Assessing the application of learning involves evaluating learners' ability to transfer their knowledge and skills to real-world contexts or new situations. This criterion examines learners' capacity to use what they have learned in practical and meaningful ways, demonstrating their understanding and adaptability. 4. Critical Thinking and Analysis Measuring learners' critical thinking and analysis of skills involves assessing their ability to evaluate, analyze, and synthesize information, arguments, or data. Criteria for critical thinking may include the ability to identify biases, evaluate evidence, draw logical conclusions, or construct well-reasoned arguments. 5. Creativity and Innovation Assessing learners' creativity and innovation involves evaluating their ability to generate original ideas, solutions, or products. 
Criteria for creativity may include originality, novelty, flexibility, or the ability to think outside of the box. 6. Collaboration and Communication Measuring learners' collaboration and communication skills involve evaluating their ability to work effectively with others, exchange ideas, and convey information clearly. Criteria for collaboration and communication may include active participation, listening skills, respectful interaction, and ability to contribute constructively to group work or discussions. 7. Reflection and Metacognition Assessing learners' reflection and metacognition involves evaluating their ability to reflect on their learning process, identify areas for improvement, and make adjustments accordingly. Criteria for reflection and metacognition may include the ability to set goals, monitor progress, self-assess, and develop strategies for continuous learning. 8. Ethical and Social Responsibility Measuring learners' ethical and social responsibility involves evaluating their understanding and practice of ethical behavior, social norms, and responsibility towards others. Criteria for ethical and social responsibility may include respect for diversity, empathy, integrity, and the ability to make ethical decisions. It is important to establish clear and well-defined criteria for measuring learning progress to ensure consistency and fairness. These criteria can be reflected in rubrics, scoring guides, checklists, or specific performance indicators that align with the learning goals and outcomes of the educational program or curriculum. Now, how do we report learners' learning progress? The monitoring process, along with the assessment criteria, plays a significant role in reporting the learners' progress to various stakeholders. There are two distinct approaches to reporting the learning progress of learners. These are traditional and standards-based reporting. Traditional reporting often focuses on assigning letter grades, e.g. A, B, C, or percentages, e.g. 90%, 80%, and 70%, based on overall performance in a subject or course. Standards-based reporting is an approach to reporting learning progress that focuses on students' attainment of specific learning standards or objectives. It provides detailed feedback on students' mastery of the curriculum. What are the reporting methods of students' learning progress? Reporting learners' learning progress can be done using various methods such as 1. Grades, grading systems. The traditional method of reporting student performance is through grades or a grading system. This typically involves assigning numerical or letter grades to individual assignments, tests, projects, and overall performance. Grades can provide a summary of a student's progress and achievement. 2. Narrative Report Method This is a detailed written description of a student's progress, strengths, weaknesses, and areas for improvement. This provides qualitative feedback and is commonly used in early childhood education or individualized assessment. The approach can provide a holistic view of the learner's development. However, narrative reports can be time-consuming to create and may lack standardized comparison. 3. Rubrics. Rubrics are scoring guides that outline specific criteria for assessing performance. They can offer more detailed feedback and help learners understand their progress in different areas or skills. Rubrics can be effective when well-designed and used consistently, but they require clear and objective criteria to ensure fairness and accuracy, reliability, and validity. 4. Checklists. Checklists are useful for reporting progress on specific skills or learning objectives. Teachers can use checklists to indicate whether a student has achieved certain milestones or demonstrated particular skills. They offer a straightforward way to track progress and identify areas for improvement. 5. Portfolio Assessment Portfolios involve collecting and documenting samples of learners' work over time. They can showcase a range of skills, progress, and achievements. Portfolios encourage reflection and self-assessment, allowing learners to actively participate in the reporting process. Portfolios can be reviewed periodically, and feedback can be provided to highlight progress and areas for further development. However, assessing portfolios can be subjective, and managing and evaluating the large volume of materials can be challenging. 6. Competency-Based Assessment Competency-based assessment focuses on learners' mastery of specific skills or knowledge areas. Instead of traditional grades, 
learners are assessed against predefined learning outcomes or competencies. This approach can provide clear targets and feedback aligned with learning goals. However, it requires well-defined competencies and may require more extensive tracking and documentation. 7. Learning Analytics and Data Dashboards Learning analytics leverage data from educational technologies and systems to monitor and analyze learner progress. Data dashboards provide visual representations of this data, offering insights into performance trends and patterns. These approaches can provide real-time feedback and personalize recommendations. However, they rely on accurate data collection and interpretation and may not capture all aspects of learning, such as social and emotional development. 8. Self-Assessment and Reflection In addition to teacher evaluations, students can also be involved in assessing and reporting their own learning progress. Self-assessment tools, reflection journals, or self-evaluation forms encourage students to reflect on their achievements, challenges, and areas for growth. Self-assessment can be combined with structured reflection activities to help learners identify areas where they excel and areas they want to develop further. 9. Progress Reports Progress reports are usually issued periodically throughout the school year to update parents or guardians on students' academic performance and behavior. These reports often include grades, attendance records, and general comments on students' progress. Let us reflect. We briefly discussed the concept, function, criteria, and methods of monitoring and reporting the learning progress of learners in relation to 21st century skills. Now, what questions should we start asking ourselves? What comes to my immediate thinking is, 1. What strategies or tools do you use to communicate monitoring and evaluation results to students, parents, and other stakeholders effectively? And why? 2. In your own opinion using your experience, what are the main differences between traditional and standards-based reporting of learning progress? Now, reflect in writing on these two questions using the Gibbs Reflective Cycle Guide, which will be shared with you in this module. Compile your reflection in the e-journal available within the e-learning platform in use in this self-paced online course. Share your reflections with your colleagues at work, and also share them on the Community of Practice platform, which will be shared with you. In conclusion, the suitability and effectiveness of reporting approaches for learners' learning progress depend on various factors. It is important to consider the specific educational context, learning goals, and the needs of the learners themselves when selecting and implementing reporting approaches. Combining multiple approaches and involving learners in the assessment and reporting process can often lead to more comprehensive and effective feedback. This lecture has discussed the concept and function of monitoring and reporting the learning progress of learners. It has also presented some common criteria and methods for measuring and reporting learning progress in relation to 21st century skills. These approaches can help teachers, learners, and other stakeholders to provide feedback, identify strengths and weaknesses, and improve learning outcomes. If you have any questions or challenges with any of the concepts discussed in this lecture, please use the discussion forum of Module 5 under Lecture 6 to ask questions and answer other participants' questions as well. Thank you for your attention.